Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Living with Hep B. My name is Mick Del Rosario. I'm the program manager at San Francisco Hep B Free Bay Area. And for today's episode, we want to take a look at someone who is involved in the community in, in the San Francisco Bay Area, as well as someone who has been involved with San Francisco Hep B Free uh, just a little bit, but has made a lot of meaningful impact and a significant contribution to our efforts to eliminate uh, hepatitis B and liver cancer. Vanita Louie is a 30-year veteran in the travel industry, born and raised in San Francisco. She is involved in a lot of, a lot of volunteering opportunities and a lot of different uh, volunteering efforts. And she is also the board member or should I say, the member of the Governance Council at San Francisco Happy Free Bay Area. Vanita, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Mick. <laughs> um, I'm very excited to be on the board, the Governance Council, um, along with another uh, Amy, Dr. Amy Tang. But um, I've been on the council for a very short time in that um, I was joined and inducted and then COVID hit. So um, I feel like there's a lot of work to be done and uh, we just can't wait till we can uh, open up and do some of that work. Right, COVID definitely has impacted the kind of work that we do at SF Hep B Free in terms of educating and screening the community um, about hepatitis B and liver cancer. How did you find out about hepatitis B? Or when was the first time you've heard about Hep B? Well, I knew there was a Hepatitis A, a B, and a C. But I was um, through the community work and supporting uh, a lot of many nonprofits in the Bay Area. I was invited to a uh, Hep B Free SF Gala. That was a, a very nice event um, at a at a hotel with a dinner. And uh, there was a portion of the evening where they had speakers come up and speak about hepatitis B. And when I heard uh, Alan Wong speak about his story and having uh, contracted Hep B through uh, his mother, I was very moved by it. And he went for a screening and he received the vaccination, and now he is living with uh, Hep B free. So Alan was featured on our first episode where he was talking about his experience and being able to um, adapt and treat his hepatitis B diagnosis. And uh, we'll add the link in the video below as well. It's on our, our YouTube channel. I, I am curious, you are a long time community advocate, been involved with different organizations. Uh, what got you wanting to be involved with SF Hep B Free and to join the Governance Council? Um, well, actually there are several board members or uh, members that served on the board that have been like a mentor to me. Um, Carol Ito being one and um, Stuart Fong, and then yourself, Nick, and of course our uh, executive director, Richard So. Um, so those are the, the members that I know best, and um, having heard and attended um, some of the galas, I was uh, very honored when I was approached to uh, see if I wanted to get involved. So when I was asked, you know, I, my first response is, I have no education, no skilled knowledge about the disease. And I was told right away that uh, that wasn't necessary, that they look for board members that are diverse, um, and they were looking for someone that could help with uh, events or leadership, or just energy, bringing energy into, uh, into the board. So I, I opened my heart and I did a quick education, did a lot of reading about hepatitis B. And you know, it's when I found out that there is a cure for hepatitis B in the horizon. I said, 
five or ten years a cure for this disease, no one else should have to die with hepatitis B or liver cancer. And it's a silent killer. And I said, if there's a cure five or ten years down the line, I might live long enough to see that. So right away, I dove in head first and I thought, I want to get involved. I want to help this organization out and I want to help educate people about hepatitis B. Definitely. And as you mentioned, it's a disease that disproportionately affects Asian American Pacific Islanders. Um, you know, we've said this in previous episodes, but it always hits the point home. One in 12 Asian American Pacific Islanders are chronically infected with hepatitis B. And it's ever more important for us to continue the work in educating and screening the community in the San Francisco Bay Area. And as you mentioned, it's great that we have a wealth of diverse different experiences. And myself, my background's not in public health, uh, but rather in the community work. And I think those are the things that allows us to have a strong team to continue our organization's mission. As, you, as someone like yourself who is involved in the community, what other organizations are you a part of uh, currently and also previously? Well, um, you know, I worked for myself for 30 years as an entrepreneur. And uh, when I left my profession, um, I was bored. I was really bored. I was so used to, you know, being able to, to make an impact on one thing or another. And um, there's a big uh, place in our hearts for the youth and for seniors. So I'm involved in um, you know, many of the nonprofits, the names that you, uh, the Bay Area, uh, hears quite frequently. Um, I'm also involved in uh, faith formation for children, once again, young ones. Um, the thing is, when I learned that hepatitis B is transmitted from mother to child and that unless a person is screened and tested they don't know that they have hepatitis B and they're, that they're living with it and with over 81,000 um, Asian Americans and uh, immigrants of Asian descent living in the Bay Area you know it, I'm very anxious to get out of this pandemic COVID and be able to help this organization plan events for screening, um, to, to, to have the, the, the hospitals and organizations and the, the doctors help us and coordinate uh, events where we can test people. Because the sooner you find out, um, there's a two dose or a three dose vaccination. So I, I can't wait to get out there into the community and do some of that work. Absolutely. I feel that when uh, you joined the board, it was right at the beginning of the pandemic. We've only had a few months before being able to go out and hold these kinds of community events. I believe we, for the year of 2020, we were only able to have one, one event, which was the Ocean Avenue Lunar New Year Festival. And that's about it <laughs> until we're able to go back into the world and continue to outreach. Uh, you mentioned that you're born and raised in San Francisco. Growing up, did you know about hepatitis B or did your family or relatives know about hepatitis B? Actually, I, I didn't know about it and I feel somewhat ignorant about it. I never really heard about this disease. And um, now that I think back, I have a, a uncle from Shanghai that was living here and uh, his son, who was 41 years old, came over to uh, live in San Francisco with him. And shortly after David, the son, arrived, um, he complained that he, he, he was sleepy, that, that he was having pains in his, in his abdomen area. So he went and had a checkup. And sad to say, within six months, David passed away of liver cancer. Mm. So not even knowing about Hep B, but thinking back on that story, I know he was a carrier and he was infected. And that's how, if the disease is not treated, it can turn into liver cancer and, 
and you can die. Yeah, it's it's tough. It definitely is tough. I think it's ever more important in the kind of work that we're doing, especially in your role as a member of the Governance Council, to reach out to more folks and to bring these kinds of um, awareness to communities and different organizations and groups that we might not have done before. Uh, even though your time on the Governance Council has been mostly virtual, um, we definitely have had a good amount of accomplishments so far. Another thing that's coming up soon is our annual gala. Uh, for folks that haven't seen last year's virtual gala, it's on our YouTube page as well. Uh, but that's definitely, I, I think for me, one big highlight as well. We've had uh, CNN's uh, Lisa Ling and her husband, uh, Dr. Paul Song, as the, the co-host for last year's gala. I think it was a great way to bring in that kind of celebrity pool and their network of people to be aware about hepatitis B. I definitely think it's a great way for getting more people involved to know and to support SF Hep B Free's mission. Yep, and you know, to even think about attending a gala with people in a room, you know, that's gonna be something to really look forward to. And that again was the first way that I learned about Hepatitis B by attending one of those galas. And so I too am excited about, um, you know, just returning to something normal and to uh, socialize but we all, you know, at Happy Free want to always also uh, follow the safety protocols. Definitely. What, Happy aside, what was one challenge that you faced during the COVID pandemic? Um, well, I don't look at the pandemic as something that was something bad in history that happened to us. I kind of like to think positive. And it was, uh, you know, a year and a half of um, just learning and looking in the mirror at myself, what to set, uh, what priorities I had in my life, and um, what were the important things uh, to myself. And the first thing is, you know, the my family, uh, my friends, and the community. And hepatitis B is. Um, part of my community. So uh, I am um, once again I'm really excited to begin that work because I've never really got to do of any of that work. So uh, once again I'm going to turn to my mentors to help me uh, with how to um, how to uh, have the clinical people involved, the doctors and um, and the community who to bring in so that we can start some of that screening and testing. Has COVID impacted your work just on the regular or not even ju uh, just work on the Governance Council at SF Happy Free, but just day to day? Um, actually, no, because um, the, the board that we sit on, they're very smart people. And, you know, uh, yourself and Richard So, you know, they're, they really care about their work. And so anytime we did have uh, uh, our monthly meeting, it was, um, I thought, very interesting. Uh, we had and just, you know, a really exciting agenda, some, a lot of great news to share. So, you know, I want to thank the, the, the staff at Hep Be Free because while we're in this pandemic, um, though it hasn't stopped any of the work and progression towards um, what's in the future for Hep B. And it's just not on the uh, San Francisco. I learned that you know Hep B is, a, is on the national level. There are uh, many wonderful and smart people that are involved that really want to help, help you know the Asian American and Pacific Islanders, um, as well as uh, Africa. A lot of um, a lot of Hep B is in within Africa. So um, they we're all talking, um, working towards the same cause. And it's, um, there's a, um, it's one common goal that we all work towards. 
and even though regardless if we're on Zoom or in a conference room, um, it's all towards the same, same goal. What's one thing or what is one project or effort that you would like to see come out of SF Hep Be Free within this year or even the years ahead? Um, I want to plan an event. I want to plan a screening event. And I could see it stretched out from the peninsula all the way through Marin and San Francisco. So with 81,000 Asian American and Pacific Islanders and immigrants that live in the Bay Area, that's a lot of people. So that would keep us all busy for quite some time planning events and um, testing people. Let's get testing people, find out who needs treatment, and, and um, no one should die of hepatitis B. We want to help save lives um, because it's a silent killer and there aren't any symptoms. And in a lot of cases, um, by the time there are symptoms like my cousin David, it's too late. Exactly. Two out of three don't know their status until it's too late. And as you mentioned, why it's called the silent killer. It is, that's, that's definitely one thing that I'm looking forward to as well, once we are able to go out into the world again and yeah, that, that ties into the work to educate folks and it is an easily preventable disease. Mm -hmm. The fact that there is vaccination, the fact that it is treatable even if you are infected with hepatitis B. The most important thing is to make sure that people are aware and people know their status in the first place. So absolutely, once we are able to go out there, we'll be able to have these screening events like we have during the four times, as I call it, before the pandemic. Yeah, and think, think about this, Make there's a cure. They say within, you know, the experts say uh, within five or 10 years, and I figure by then I won't be that old and there'll be a, a, a cure for this and I wanna live to see that. So, you know, together we can all work on that and um, save lives and cure. What's one thing you would want to say, someone who's watching this video, who might be interested in joining, not necessarily SF Happy Freeze Board or Governor's Council, but rather someone who wants to get involved in their community and wants to volunteer their time to a cause that's important? I say come on board, because the more the merrier, um, especially if you are in the health field and you didn't know much about Hep B Free. You know, you could be a quick learner like myself and um, really work with these uh, really smart people and, and learn more about how we can get out there and together, you know, it's, it's, we do things in numbers. And so the more you learn about hepatitis B, the more you want to get involved. And so give me a call and uh, I'll get you hooked up. Yeah, for folks that are watching, obviously consider as a happy free as your first choice to volunteer on the board. <laughs> um, but, uh, but if not, that, that's okay too, I guess. <laughs> so future aside, anything you're looking forward to, like go on vacation or see relatives or whatnot once this pandemic's over? Well, you know, as the, as most of the, the nation says, you know, get vaccinated. You know, we waited for a vaccination for COVID. You know, we all prayed every night before we went to bed. Oh my gosh, please someone, you know, come up with a, with a vaccination. And so now that I'm on the, involved with Hep B Free, there is already a vaccination for hepatitis B, a two dose or a three dose. And so the sooner you get tested, there's a vaccination, there's treatment, there's uh, phlebotomists waiting for you. And so they can really help you live like Dr. Wong. He is now uh, hepatitis B free. So the sooner you, you, you get tested, the, you know, this, the, the more comforting and more safe you feel. I myself got tested recently because I had my annual physical and I asked my physician, 
you know, Dr. Holm, I want to be tested for hepatitis B. He says, why? I said, because I learned a lot about it, and I learned that a lot of Asian Americans have um, uh, contracted it, that through their, their, their mother-child, or through, um, through uh, the sharing of, of blood, or, or, or liquid, or something, uh, not through a drink. But um, I just feel more comfortable if I got tested, and I did get tested, and um, I'm negative. So at least I sleep better, but you know, like the COVID vaccination, I feel better that I got one. And so the sooner you get tested for hepatitis B, you're kind of helping the community and yourself and um, to learn more about that. Definitely. Um, yeah, birth, blood, and sexual contact are the ways one can get uh, infected with hepatitis B. And as you mentioned, yes, not through drinks, not through uh, saliva or any of that. Is, is there anything you would like to say to this person who's watching this video right now, just in general, about the mission that we're doing or one thing they should know about getting involved in the, the fight against hep B and liver cancer? Uh, no, it's, um, thank you for watching this, this episode four. Um, Make sure you watch episode one through three because that's uh, really exciting. And um, give us a call if you're interested in, uh, in uh, hepatitis B and working with our, our council. Excellent. Vanina Louie, she is a member at the Governance Council of San Francisco Hep B Free, all-star community leader, superstar volunteer. Vanita, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Nick.